Today I'm going to show you PowerShell on Linux. I'm just going to kind of kick the tires on it and just show you it if you if you haven't seen it before. And if you want to go ahead and follow along or get PowerShell, um, today is August 23rd, 2016. And currently it is in the alpha release, so it's very early on. And if you want to get it, you have to go to github.com slash PowerShell slash PowerShell. And that will take you to the GitHub repository. And under the readme file here, if you scroll down, they say tell you how to get PowerShell. It gives you instructions for the different versions of Linux or Mac OS, as well as the links to the downloads. So I already have this installed on my machine. So I'll go ahead and show you that. I'm in terminal here. I'll go ahead and make that full screen. Now just to start off, once you're in terminal, if you want to actually use PowerShell, you'll need to uh, type in PowerShell. That will then step you into PowerShell, which then you can follow along here. So this is an alpha release, so there may be a few bugs here and there, but uh, bear with me. If we want to, now that we're in here, I just want to show you kind of the commandlets that are here. So first, actually, I actually want to do a count here. So I'm going to just do um, git command. Let's say count. And there's currently 345 PowerShell functions or commandlets available on this version. Now this is very, very small compared to if you're running you know, Server 2016 or Windows 10. There's many, many more commandlets out there. But just keep in mind this is the PowerShell core, not the full-fledged PowerShell. And this is actually built on the .NET core, which is a slimmed down version of .NET. And because of that, it has a whole lot less commandlets. And it's basically focused around getting the PowerShell um, language out there. You know, you can create functions and whatnot, and the core PowerShell commandlets for you to use. So just real quick, uh, just want to show you you have all your write commandlets. You know, your write error, write debug, everything you would expect that you need to do your normal PowerShell things. It's com it comes with PowerShell jobs. I haven't tried those out. I'm not sure if they work, but uh, they may or may not work. And if you keep scrolling up here. You'll have your kind of you'll see you have your typical just core commandlets. You have your out file, out host. Again, you have you know your standard imports. So you can import a CSV file, import CLI XML. Let me go a little bit further up here. You'll see there is all your format ones, your format list, format table, things like that. And there are a few others. You know your export commands. You can export a CSV file. As well as you know, dealing with JSON, you can convert from JSON, convert to JSON. If you'll see here, see here, mostly say Microsoft PowerShell core modules, and there's a few utilities. You might also see you'll see some they have some things for desired state configuration, which I have yet to play around with on Linux. And you'll also may see some pester, some uh, commandlets from pester, and that's dealing with the uh, unit uh, test framework for PowerShell. But they're not a ton. There's enough for me to kind of show you, uh, show you some things. So the big difference in PowerShell is in the way it handles things. It's a little bit different than your standard, you know, Unix and Linux way of doing things. In Unix and Linux, things are very the operating system is very document oriented, meaning if you want to do something, a lot of times you change some sort of configuration file, which is text, and then you may may or may not, you know, restart a service or restart an application for those changes to go in effect. Now in the Windows world, things are handled a little bit differently. Uh, things is, Windows is very API oriented. We're gonna, you know, you're gonna have to um, do something against an API in order to make a change. And because of that, the differences in how Linux and Unix has handled things and Windows have been, you know, quite different. So if I type in, for instance, a PS, we use the AUX switch, I can get a list of, you know, all the current processes running on my Linux box here. But the big difference is this outputted text and on the screen, but as well as the pipeline. So if I now want to work with this and maybe sort anything once that command is ran, I'm not talking about switches. I can use the PS switches to do probably some sorts and filtering other things. But once I run that command, after that, everything is text. And so for instance, if I wanted to find everything that was maybe running GNOME, I could use, say, grep GNOME here. And that'll pull all the lines. Now, if I only wanted, say, a certain column to show, maybe I'd use awk to do some more text parsing. 
that everything at this point you're dealing with is your parsing text. Now, to keep it fair, again, I know the PS command has some other switches I could probably deal with to do some of this to make it easier. But the point is, is once the command is ran, everything is outputted in text. And then I'm going to use some sort of um, text parsing tool to deal with that from there on. And that is a big difference in the way the PowerShell handles things. And that's basically where it was born out of. Since PowerShell was born out of Windows, where everything was you know, API focused, PowerShell deals with objects in the pipeline and not just text. And by the way, I am no Linux expert and I don't claim to be. So if I state something here that you think is wrong, please go ahead and make a comment and correct me and I'll try to make some sort of note on a video to make a correction. So I'm going to go ahead and clear screen here. If I type in git process, this is, if I can type right here, git process, this is essentially the same thing as running the ps command, except there's one big difference. This didn't, now this outputted text to the screen, but behind the scenes in the pipeline, it actually produced objects. And to show you that, I'm going to go ahead and go run git process again. We'll go ahead and pipe that to git member or gm for short. It's the alias. And this will show us the actual objects that are in the pipeline. And you'll see right here, it is a process object. And you'll see there's a lot of these properties, some alias properties, which link to actual properties. They're just short, short names for them. And you'll see all these properties. There's quite a few of them for the process object. And there's methods as well. So I could run, for instance, kill method on a process to terminate that process. And with different objects, we'll have you know different methods and different properties. But the idea behind this is PowerShell is outputting everything in the form of an object in the pipeline. And so you can do things a little bit differently rather than just handling text. So if I want to, for instance, sort it, I can use the sort object commandment, which will sort any object, not just process object, any objects in the pipeline. And for this example, the get process is going to produce process objects. Now sort objects is going to go ahead and go ahead and grab a hold of those. And then I can go ahead and access the property CPU, for instance, and we'll use the descending switch, which will sort those in descending order. I can then go ahead and pipe this, for instance, to the where object command, or where for short, and then do some sort of fil filtering. And I'm gonna go ahead and say where the CPU is greater than 10. Again, that is accessing the property on that object as it's going through the pipeline. And I'll go ahead and run that now. And you'll see it, you know, filter that. And again, if I look here and I say, you know, I really only want to show the CPU, maybe the working set and the process name, I can just go ahead and pipe this again to the select object command or just select for short. And I can go ahead and pick out the properties I want. And keep in mind, um, PowerShell is not case sensitive. Now there is a few exceptions to that for the Linux and Mac OS. Uh, and that's dealing with file names and I believe a few other things since Linux and Mac OS uh, operating system is case sensitive. So I can do this here. And again, I filtered, I basically actually modified the object with the select object command. I could actually pipe that to GM again. You'll see there's a lot shorter list. So the select object actually modified the objects coming through the pipeline and only it only now has the properties that I told it that I wanted to. Now, again, if I want to, I can, since I'm dealing with objects, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and easily convert this to a JSON object using the convert to JSON. See if I can get this right. Oh, if I can spell right here. And if I wanted to, I could use, pipe that to out file or I could just use the redirect. And we'll just say proc.json. And just to show you that, I'm gonna go ahead and clear a screen and we'll go ahead and cat proc.json. And you can see that this saved that information to a file in a JSON format. Now, I don't really know a use case for doing that for this example, but I just wanna show you that because you're dealing with um, objects, it's really easy to do things like that. Now, I'm not saying one way is better than the other, but there is a very distinct difference that uh, the way PowerShell handles things compared to the normal way that Linux and Unix does. Now there's nothing stopping you from running your standard aux set and grep commands right through PowerShell, but you also have the richness of dealing with PowerShell objects if you want to. 
Now the main use cases I really see this working for is for one, if you're dealing with a lot of structured data, um, PowerShell really shines. Or if you're dealing with a mixed environment, once you know PowerShell is, you know it releases stable releases, um, you know you could really simplify management by having you know, kind of to a certain degree one code base to manage all your systems in kind of a unified way. So, anyways, I hope you uh, enjoyed and kind of see uh, see what this whole power thing, PowerShell thing is on uh, Linux and Mac. Thank you for watching.